It is week four of the 2022 college football season, and we have had our fair share of surprises so far this season. If you would have told me that after week three, Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, and Syracuse were all undefeated, I would have thought the college basketball season started early. But as a whole for week four, I do hope that week four is a much better week than what we saw last week. A lot of the games, including the ones a lot of hype and excitement built around them, resulted in blowouts, which I personally found last week pretty disappointing. But there is potential of a better week, as we have a few top 25 matchups this week, and a more regularly based conference play begins. It's time to make my predictions for week four, and last week, I went 6-1, and one, only missing on Miami and Texas A&M. In my defense, that was before we knew that Max Johnson would be the starting quarterback. But nonetheless, that puts me at 21-7 and seven on the season so far, which is excellent, especially after a bad week two. So without further ado, let's get into my week four college football predictions. We kick things off with a Pac-12 match between Oregon and Washington State, and both these teams, they're off to a solid start this season. Oregon showed that the week one performance against Georgia is not something to define their season. After picking up a dominant win against BYU last week, well, Washington State, they're 3-0, including having an upset win on the road against Wisconsin. Incarnate Word transfer quarterback Cameron Ward has put up some decent numbers, completing just over 65% of his passes and throwing for eight touchdowns so far this season. The Cougar defense has only allowed an average of 12.6 points per game, including only giving up 14 points against Wisconsin in their offset win. And I think that says something about the Cougar defense. I think it shows that they are very underrated, and this is going to be a big test for the Cougars as they begin Pac-12 play. And I will admit, I overlooked Washington State in the preseason. I did not expect them to beat a team like Wisconsin. And this game on Saturday, it's going to be evident how good this Washington State team can be as we head into the later portion of the season. But I am going to pick Oregon to win this game and get off to a good start in Pac-12 play. Despite Bo Nix having a bad history on the road throughout his entire college career, I find last week's performance against BYU a confidence booster for him. In fact, the last two games, actually. Because Bo Nix needed to have good performances to get his confidence up for conference play. Yes, he did throw two picks against Georgia and couldn't score a touchdown. But we've seen Georgia's defense the last couple of years, and we know that it's probably the best defense in college football. And Oregon knows that Pasadena is still on the table. And including three rushing touchdowns last week for Bo Nix, complete confidence booster, as I think the Ducks pick up the win and start Pac-12 playoff strong. Next up, we have an undefeated Indiana taking on Cincinnati. Indiana has gotten lucky in their first few games this season. With cover behind wins in each of those three wins, which includes a late go ahead touchdown drive against Illinois, an overtime victory against West Kentucky last week, and they fell behind early against Idaho. And they had to come back in the second half. And now they take on a Cincinnati team that beat Indiana last season by a score of 30 to 24 en route to their college football playoff appearance. But now this is a much different Bearcats team. And the team that made the college football playoff last year. In week one, we saw them compete really hard with Arkansas, who is a top 10 team in college football from start to finish. The Razorbacks can never create separation against the Bearcats. I think that Indiana's luck is going to run out this week, as I like the Bearcats to win big this weekend, as they look to make their way back to the top 25 and in the hunt for the automatic New Year's Six bid. Luke Fickle's going to have this team energized. There's still a lot more to play for. As this right here is Cincinnati's toughest game left of the season. 
in my opinion. Moving on to what could be a very underrated game this week, Minnesota and Michigan State. The Spartans look to bounce back from a really bad loss on the road at Washington, where the Huskies, they look like a top 15 team. They look like legitimate Pac-12 contenders. While the Gophers are starting to play some real competition, Minnesota running back Mo Ibrahim currently sits second in the country in rushing yards, which is a big reason why Minnesota is currently second in the country in time of possession. Michigan State ranks 103rd in passing defense, which is a good thing to hear if you're Minnesota quarterback Tanner Morgan. However, star receiver Chris Ottman bell is questionable for this game as he left the game early against Colorado last week with an injury. I do like the Gophers to win this week behind a big game from Noah Ibrahim, and a win from Minnesota would establish themselves as Big Ten West contenders, if not the favorite, as more often than not, the Big Ten West comes down to them, Iowa, and Wisconsin. And with the way Iowa has played offense this season, it's looking like a tough challenge for Iowa to make it back to the Big Ten title game. As this game right here, we are heading into conference play. And Saturday, we're going to see how good this Minnesota team can really be heading into the late portion of the year. We saw Minnesota make the top four in the rankings pretty recently. I believe it was about maybe three years ago. Whenever P.J. Flex, I believe it was his first or second year when he was the coach at Minnesota, they made it all the way to the top four. Someone in the comments section can help me out here. I'd appreciate that. But I, I like the Gophers to win. I'm intrigued to see how Michigan State responds to how poorly they played against Washington. But I do think the Gophers, they'll win. Next up, Wisconsin and Ohio State. And I am intrigued by this matchup. The Wisconsin running game going up against one of maybe even the most explosive offense in the entire country. We saw the Ohio State defense hold the Irish of Notre Dame to only 76 rushing yards in week one and currently sits at 24th in the FBS in rushing defense. As the run defense was a big problem for the Buckeyes last season, and they go up against the Wisconsin Badgers, a team that lives and dies off the running game. Wisconsin has what it takes to pull off the upset, playing their style of play and keeping the Ohio State offense on the sidelines. Ohio State currently averages 47.7 points per game, which is in the top 10 in the entire country. I do see the Badgers putting in a great effort in this game, led by star running back Braylon Allen, averaging over 6.5 yards per carry, but I just think this Ohio State offense is too lethal with a Heisman frontrunner quarterback in C.J. Stroud arguably the best receiving core in the entire country as we have seen Harrison Jr. step up for the Buckeyes in these last few weeks. A defense that has so far shown lots of improvement from a year ago with new defensive coordinator Jim Knowles. I'm still not sold on Badgers quarterback Graham Mertz as I think of him as the Big Ten version of Bo Nix, a quarterback that has had his positive and negative moments throughout his career, but unfortunately a lot of negative moments overshadow the positive ones. I am interested to see how long the Wisconsin defense can keep the Badgers in the game. Because even if Ohio State starts off slow, it's only a matter of time until they start to wake up in this game. But at the end of the day, I just think the Buckeyes will come out on top. We have a top 25 matchup in Cowboy Stadium between Arkansas and Texas A&M. Arkansas got to a slow start against Missouri State last week, falling behind 17 to nothing early on, but got better the further on the game went. The Aggies bounced back last week against Miami after a devastating loss against App State the week prior, but they only won that game by a score of 17 to nine. I look at the matchup from last season. And rewatching the game from last season with Arkansas winning 24 to 10, the Aggie defense really held their own in that matchup. They only really had two bad plays on defense, but the negative about that, those two bad defensive plays were both Arkansas touchdowns. And I look at the AM offense as an offense that can't 
generate getting anything going, only averaging 20 points of points per game, which is 109th in the FBS. For this offense to get going, Max Johnson, who I will assume is going to be the quarterback in this matchup, he's got to not be afraid to throw the ball deep. Jimbo Fish needs to be fearless in calling for deep passing plays. As Jimbo Fisher's play calling has really been under the microscope for the longest time now. In fact, it was under the microscope even more after the App State game. And it still needs to be put under the microscope. As, yes, you beat Miami last week 17-9, to but 17 points is not going to cut it in SEC play. It just isn't. I mean, only scoring 17 points might be able to beat maybe South Carolina. You may be able to beat Vanderbilt, but that's about it. A&M has got to take advantage of having the speed of Evan Stewart and Anaya Smith, even Devon Achain, as Arkansas has the worst passing defense in the nation. So they're going to have a significant advantage in this matchup with their speed versus the Arkansas secondary. And I do think this is going to be a lower scoring game, just like it was last year. But I think Arkansas is going to win this matchup once again this season, as I truly can't trust a Jimbo Fisher called offense, as he's still using an offense that has expired for about 10 years now, but he's still using it. I just can't trust AM to win big time games against the SCC. I just really can't. Sure, they won last week, but the defense carried them. And your defense can only carry you so far. Just ask Clemson from last season. They had one of the best defenses in college football, but yet they couldn't carry them every single week. Moving on to Florida and Tennessee... And my thoughts on Florida have changed. Right after they upset Utah in week one, I thought that Florida was going to use that win and energize them throughout the rest of the year. I thought that Florida could be a legitimate threat to win the SEC conference. I thought they could be the team that could stun Georgia. I thought that Anthony Richardson was a legitimate Heisman contender after seeing the performance he put on against Utah. But the last two games, a loss to Kentucky, a game where the Wildcats completely dominated in that game, and a narrow escape against South Florida last week. In the last two games, Anthony Richardson's stat line has been this, 14-35, 143 yards, two interceptions, and only four, care, four yards on six carries against Kentucky. And last week against South Florida. 10 of 18, 112 yards, 2 interceptions, 24 yards on 7 carries. Anthony Richardson has got to get going again if the Gators want any shot of representing the SEC East in Atlanta. He's got to get going now, let alone getting a potential New Year's Six bid. Because New Year's Six, Atlanta, it's still on the table. While Tennessee, they're averaging over 52 points per game. Although you can argue that if Keenan Slovis doesn't exit the game for Pittsburgh in Week 2, Pittsburgh beats Tennessee in that second week matchup. But the way I see this game, I have seen this movie several times with Tennessee. Tennessee gets out to a strong start. And then once Tennessee starts to play some real teams... Then they start to stumble. And Florida, they have overcome some adversity just in the short tenure with Billy Napier. And I still think Billy Napier is the guy to turn around Florida. I think Florida goes into Knoxville and pulls off a stunner. They are 10-point dogs in this game, but... I think the dogs can come out to play. I think Anthony Richardson, I think he gets back on the right track and he puts on a big performance and leads Florida to an upset victory. 
wrapping things up with what I think is the best game of the week, Clemson and Wake Forest. It's great to see Wake Forest quarterback Sam Hartman back on the field after it was announced he was out indefinitely weeks before the season started. Clemson handled Wake Forest last year by a score of 48-27. to And last week against Louisiana Tech, Clemson was missing seven defensive starters, including projected first-round pick Brian Brees. He should be back for the Tigers this week, who was out for a personal matter. With Notre Dame struggling all season long so far, I feel like this is the second toughest game that Clemson has this season, with the toughest being NC State, which is coming up. I like Clemson to win this game and take care of Wake Forest once again this season. But I do want to point out that this is the point in the season where we have to keep our eye on the quarterback situation for Clemson. If DJ Uyagule struggles in this game, do they call in Cade Klubnik? We saw Cade Klubnik get some action against Georgia Tech, and he led a touchdown drive. And he looked calm and poised throughout that entire drive. Now, Uyagule has, he had some struggles against Georgia Tech early on, but now this is that point in the season where Clemson, they are going to play their tougher games coming up, and this is one of them. If we see DJ struggle in this game, does Dabo Sweeney, does he put in Kate Klubnik, especially if we see them down 14 nothing early? Because... If Wake Forest goes up 14 nothing early, their crowd's going to be into it. They're going to make a noise. Will Dabo try to get a spark and put in Klubnik if there's early struggles? But, all in all, I am picking the Tigers to win this one. And that will do it for my Week 4 college football predictions. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And enjoy your college football Saturday.